took a bit of different approach to this presentation. Uh, this is not a technical presentation. If you're looking for technical gory details on something, this is not the right place to be. Um, but I'm just going to talk to you from the point of view of, uh, we, we usually talk about what is the benefit of the company uh, to expose some APIs. So I took the other way around, which is, what is it for us as consumers and users uh, of the, all this innovation? What does that bring us in our everyday life? That's really what the purpose of this presentation is. So just a few words of introduction. I'm slightly distorted here, but it's okay. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm Isabel, so I'm, I'm a French person. Um, I live in Spain, much nicer, lots of sun. Um, <laughs> and I usually work uh, now in, in Sri Lanka, which is where my company is. So WSO2, most of the employees are actually in Sri Lanka. So I spend quite my time there. Been a lot of time in IBM, uh, about 17 years, and then I completely switched from a very large company to a very small one, which had only 15 employees at the time. Has been growing since then. And, and WSO2 is like 90 people, and I joined about two, and a, two years and a half and has now almost 450. So we're on a growing scale as well. But we're, we still have time to reach IBM, which is 400,000. Um, we'll get there. So the, the um, idea started um, in, in some of the tweets I've seen reference to me as a Java pioneer. Um, so <laughs> the reason I've put this, I think, in my Twitter profile is I work with a lot of young people. Some of the people we take in the team, they're like 20, 22. Okay, and, and I've been around for about 20 years, and if some of you have been around for 20, 25 years, you've seen a lot of things, right? You've seen the movement of everything's on the server, and then, oh, no, everything needs to be back on the client. Oh, no, everything needs to be back on the server again. And we've been doing this like a few times in the past 20 years, okay? So I'm going to challenge you this, ladies and gentlemen. What is this? Come on, the young people in the audience? Right? So in this nice message, there are two API calls. <laughs> All right? You see API calls? <laughs> I guess yeah, if I'm in front of it, you can't see the bottom of the, t the screen. Okay? So well, I'm, I'm putting this on to tell you that APIs are not new. It's like I get this debate all the time when I talk to customers who are a bit skeptical and say, I've been doing this before. Yeah, it's looked like you guys have invented APIs. No, we haven't. Uh, that's my challenge to you. Right? The notion of an API, of an interface, to be able to call that API and that interface does something and returns you a result, that has been there for the longest time. <laughs> right? So this is COBOL, right? the two exec, uh, the kicks exec thing are the API calls to some routines behind the scenes. Right? So those are API calls. So what did we do? What has changed for people? That has not really changed my life. Uh, it's probably running some code somewhere that you use every day in banking and all kind of applications, all right? But when I, looked, when I look at the evolution over the past 20, 25 years that I've been in this business and what's happening today, right? The really, the difference is the following. When I started working, a company, an enterprise, like this big bulk of, we were doing everything. When, when I started IBM back in 92 in France, we had a travel agency, we had um, the whole of food was made inside, like every single service that we needed was inside the enterprise. It was like this conglomerate type thing. And then suddenly companies started to explode, right? Now you wouldn't think about doing this. If you, I was just telling somebody some, uh, this morning, you can just start a new company in a day, right? You, you just do the right papers, maybe it takes a bit more time in France, I don't know. But I know in England it takes like 15 minutes, for example. In 15 minutes you can register a new company. In the next 15 minutes you can boot up 10 servers. In the next 15 minutes you can have your mail. In like half a day you have enough technology at your hands that you can focus on what your business is going to be. That was like impossible 20 years ago, right? So the evolution for us has been this, is like all this IT at our fingertips. So what is APIs playing in that game, right? 
what the APIs have been bringing are this like what I had before called frictionless integration. It's extremely easy to integrate with anything. We had some examples now. I'm sure that Mark O'Neill is going to give some other ones in the next talk, right? But the evolution of the world, what is it today? First of all, we have those things that we connect to the internet, right? The mobiles, the things, the, 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 your fridge very soon, your door, you know, anything very soon is going to be connected to the internet and do something. You'll be able to interact with it through it. There's no way you're going to interact with anything without an API, okay? Then you have all those apps. What is fueling when we see this from a WSO2 perspective, the number one motivation we see in companies for, for exposing external APIs is mobile applications. It's the ability for creating their own mobile applications, and if they want, to also make those public to allow others to create third-party applications, right? And then all those people we have to connect. So this is kind of the triangle that we have to work with. We have tons of things to connect. We have all those apps that are being developed. So how is this influencing our lives now? So I'll give you a first example, the first image. This is the connected car. Well, it's a bit of, bit of strong connection, I agree. Uh, but <laughs> the evolution of the connected car, so very soon, here I don't trip here, uh, very soon, uh, in about two years, three years from now, every single car manufacturer is going to embed some system in the cars, so your car is connected to the internet, so there's some security stuff which already exists, but there's a huge thing that's awaiting us, and that's gonna be really completely changing the way we live, um, because the car is gonna become really intelligent. So the whole point, that's why I put that picture, is that this does not happen, right? The whole point is that the cars will be able to kind of talk to each other somehow, and say, hey, you're a bit close, get away, right? <laughs> or you're, I'm, I'm getting really closer, you know, this poor gentleman who works with us, that just said he hit a car yesterday with his bike, right? So typically what they're equipping the car, you know, putting on the cars is all those sensors, right, as all the connection to the things in IoT world. So you'll be able to actually know what's around you. The car will know what's around you. And we'll be able to take like intelligent decisions based on, uh, you know, what's going on around you. So this is something we're working on. Uh, I'm afraid I can't say the name of the manufacturer, but it's in Germany. <laughs> Let's put it this way. There's a few in Germany. Um, so it's in Germany. We're working with them on, uh, we've been doing some work already with them on, on creating the entire platform of APIs that allow them to actually connect this. And also there is an app there. So you didn't have enough apps on your phone. Now you're going to get apps on your car. So I don't know how you are doing in your car. Like I'm already distracted by all those things blinking. I can't even imagine as I have to install apps and seeing apps moving now. So I hope the, you know, that part of the crash is actually working well because we're going to get more distracted <laughs> probably and that might be very dangerous. So that's a very pervasive one. You're going to see that all you know, like everywhere. The next one, I call that connected mood. I'm not sure that's the right word for it. But let me explain. This is a telco customer we're working with. So uh, I don't know if that exists in all telcos. I have to go and, and check with the orange guys, uh, uh, see if they are doing this. But this customer we're working with today, what they do is when you call their call center, they have this software which is able to detect if you're hangry or not. Like, so if you're calling and you're like really pissed off and you're going to shout at people, right? They just divert you to a special team, a counseling team, who is really good at listening and calming you down, you know, so you don't shout and they can control you, right? They do this today. Their problem now is all those people are really, really angry on Facebook, <laughs> on any Twitter, right? And so what they need is kind of the same thing to be able to detect that somebody is really, really angry at them and they have to contain the situation. So what they've done is, um, I've a few guys, so it's not what they use, but just to give you a reference. Uh, have you heard about the Alchemy API? Alchemy, I have to, I'm saying this wrong. All right, right, Alchemy, Alchemy, you know that, right? So this is a, a sentiment analysis API that they're using. 
So basically, you can try that if you want. It's pretty nice. You can just send any stream of text to the API, and it will tell you if it's negative, it's in neutral, or if it's positive. And based on that, they can just like directly stream all their Twitter and Facebook and all the text that come in there, stream it to those APIs, and then automatically call you if they detect who you are, and like proactively calm you down. <laughs> that's what they're working on. Okay, so that's 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 something. You know, usually when you call support, that's probably something you want is like people being nice with you. It's a good thing for you to kind of be calmed down and it's good for them in terms of customer service, right? So they also can then analyze what is the risk for you to kind of switch to somebody else, right? So you also have a bit of pressure there. Take, it, take advantage of it, right? <laughs> if, you t if you put a nasty message on Facebook, believe me, it has, I had an experience about this. It can have some very positive effect on customer service. Um, so that, that's another thing we're actually working on. Um, the, the next one, this is actually one of my favorites. Uh, we've been working with those guys from Barcelona and uh, the Barcelona Digital Center, and they created this offering. Uh, so I get sentimental for 30 seconds. I had a very old grandmother. She died, she was like 98. She could have died at 110. She, probably she had enough health to actually do that. but. Unfortunately, at the time, it was, it's very difficult. If you guys have senior people at home, you know it's hard to keep them at home alone because it's, you know, it, it's a risk. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, maybe they leave the gas open or something happens. So, so what those guys have been doing is creating a package of a set of sensors. So for CO2, for uh, temperature, uh, they have this like panic button that you have in the home, and they're simply using, so it's gonna be like a single pack, they're gonna sell this very soon. So it's a single pack where you have like a Raspberry Pi. Um, that's the only thing you need to have inside your home. So a very $30 basically computer. All the sensors will be connected to that. You will be able, be able to install this yourself. And then what they've done is they connected this to a central system where um, they can directly interact with the person who is at home. They can call them, they can ask them some questions, they give them a tablet so they can interact. It's very demonstrated that if senior interact through tablets and stuff, it's also helping for things like Alzheimer and, and not having them not feeling so alone. So that's very positive at, um, effect. And then they have basically um, on the data center, what they have done is a set of APIs there that collect all the information from all the sensors and then push that into a central monitoring system and create those nice, that's not going to look very nice probably, but those nice dashboards out of it, okay? Which uh, allows the family, the carers, the person themselves to see what's going on. Um, if they can, there is an alert on something, somebody can like in a few minutes get at the home. So for me, it's like very, um, a great example, uh, example of sorry of, of having the ability to create a, something which is not expensive. It's going to cost about 100, maybe 150 euros to buy that pack with everything inside, installing at your home, and, and use it. Right. So that has very the power, really influencing uh, what your life is going to be uh, for those seniors. Uh, another Barcelona example. So I don't know if anybody here is working on smart cities. Uh, we have uh, worked w on, yeah, <laughs> Mark is. Uh, so we have worked, um, there's this consortium between, uh, this is a EU funded project between multiple uh, cities around Europe. So there's like Barcelona, there's Stockholm, there is Istanbul, um, and another one, I can't remember what the fourth one is today. Uh, the idea is to create a set of APIs that allows you to understand um, so what is the traffic like, the, the contamination levels, the pollen levels in like a standard way, right? So that people can create an application that will work the same way wherever the city you go to um, and give you all that information. The first application of that has been created by the Barcelona guys. And what they've done is allow you to define how to best run within the city, avoiding contamination. 
right? So they use the API to look what is the most contaminated places in the city, and they'll just take you out of there. So you can go and run in the best places, or if you're allergic to the places where there is less pollen, okay? Or even tell you, sorry, this is too high, you should really not go and run, right? Stay home, <laughs> that would be dangerous for you, all right? So again, so you can go on that uh, URL if you want. There's a few APIs already deployed there. There's more that are gonna be added by more cities by, uh, by next year, and it's all based on, on our stuff. It's like an open a PaaS a cloud platform that they have deployed for everybody to use. Um, next one, this one is gonna be big. So that might be not uh, really changing directly your life, but actually it, it well, if we're all without food, it will. Uh, so one of the key <laughs> uh, problems for the future of this world is how we are going to have enough food for everybody, right? So there is something which is really simple that we could do, which is to water the plants in the right moment, right? So if you basically water your plants or, or, or any type of crops in the right time, you can actually increase uh, how much, um, whatever, corn or wheat is produced by something like 25%, which is really something interesting, okay? The thing is usually what people do is they just turn this on, and you do this at home as well, right? You have your sprinklers in the summer, and you just turn it on, and should it rain or not rain, or should it do whatever, you still water the same way, right? So we are working with this customer in the US. Their goal is to basically have this little thing um, and another sensor um, in every single plant. So you can even individually water plants based on what they need. So it will also analyze the soil in terms of what it has, in terms of nutrients, and it will be able to say, hey, you know, for those plants, now you have to go and put some nitrates or you put some carbon or whatever it is that the plant is actually needing. So this is, you know, um, the idea is from a commercial point of view, you'll be able to actually buy that and put this in your home as well. So you can intelligently water your plants in, uh, in, in summertime. And the last one, ladies and gentlemen, yes, this is a cow, okay? And yes, there is a connected cow. I'm not going to explain what is connected, just, just go on Google and find it. <laughs> okay, but that may change uh, agricultural life as well. So, so this is in England, and it's a real connected cow. Uh, have a check. Uh, it's interesting what they've done uh, in terms of uh, managing how much milk, basically, that cow can produce. Right, just for a bit of humor before starting. So I had said in, in, in the, um, the system that I would do a demo of like IoT and, and API. So, all this stuff I talked about, as you see, it's like the convergence of those two worlds. There's a thing somewhere, and that thing either as an API you can connect to and get information from, or publishes information through an API. This is the world where we're going. This is the this connected devices to thousands, thousands of APIs that will just, you know, then the next problem is gonna be big data. We're not here to talk about that. So this demo is set up on the booth we have upstairs. Um, basically, originally this demo has been set up to demonstrate uh, uh, OAuth scopes, to say something technical. So I'll come and, and, and then explain to you how that works. One of the um, actually real application of this system we have here, so basically the idea is you read a card, is there a laser in there? Yeah. So you read an RFID card, it could be your phone actually through that thing. This is a Raspberry Pi, small Arduino on top. So you read um, this, and um, what it will do is, depending on who you are and who your, what your rights are as per that card, it will open one of the two locks, or will open actually the two locks. The uh, real application of this, uh, this has been just deployed now by the Hilton chain in the US, is that very soon you will not, be, you will not have to basically check in when you get into the hotel. You will just check in online as you do with a plane, you'll have a little application on your phone and you will basically present your phone with an FC to your door and it will open the door for you. Okay, that's coming, that's already, there's, I think there's a couple of hotels already that are equipped with this uh, in the US, but that's kind of the future of what checking in in an hotel is going to be, right? All with IoT and, and APIs behind. 
And last, if you come to the booth and talk to us and drop a card, you have a chance to win that beautiful pulsing thing, which on top of pulsing is actually producing some sound. It's a sounding system. And that is it for this session. So I'll give a few um, minutes if you have any questions or I'll be around for the next two days as well. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. <laughs> so question from the audience. I will never ask a question again. <laughs> Some question on EPI for people. Yeah, first one here. Um, with the example of the connected cow that you mentioned from the UK, there's actually been a similar project in Germany with telecom. I don't know whether you heard of that. Um, they're basically trying to figure out when is the right moment for the cow to produce offspring, where they can get the doctors in basically to help give birth or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, there's been similar projects, but that was about two years ago, so that might be worth looking into as well as an example. Sorry. The guys were working on the plants thing. Their company's uh, name is Trimble. Uh, it's not very well known here. But it's a huge company in the U.S. And one of the things they've been doing is equipping the, the, the farms with very advanced technical stuff. So people will know exactly when they have to plant, uh, how much water they have to put, how much treatment they have to do. All of this, like, like basically the, the fields are connected back to huge data centers that have all this information as well. Yeah. Another Anybody question. What else? There. Staying here then. Okay. <coughs> so you have presented some very um, interesting uh, example of um, connecting house, connecting animals. And um, what about people? And could we think, or maybe it already exists, um, connect people with their HR um, department or whatever to figure out if they are getting under too much stress or whatever and maybe should take some vacation now instead of having you know a fixed amount of vacation at a fixed um, time in the year just manage it more let's say dynamically <laughs> um, if in a department you see that there is too many people um, getting sick or something maybe there is managers that are push, pushing too hard uh, against, against them, maybe we should think about something like that. Uh, have you heard about that's it? That's a good, <laughs> that's an interesting, uh, so uh, um, I don't have any customer doing that, but that doesn't mean it's a bad idea. So I'll, I'll give you a very envy, at WSO2 we take vacation when we want, so we don't have that problem. But um, uh <laughs> apart from that, yeah, you could very well connect to HR systems and collect all that information and automatically react to it. So then there's a second angle to do this. So every time I present about APIs, Mehdi will tell you, I talk about monitoring and analytics. Because to do what you're saying, it's not only about plugging and, and gathering data, is you need to react to that information. So you actually need to gather the information, analyze it, find some patterns, and then say, okay, What's your name? Sebastian. Sebastian has been, you know, really working like hell for the past two weeks, like 18 hours a day, really deserves a vacation, you know, without you having to ask it. But to be able to do that, you need to have that data. So the first problem to solve, I think, would be how do we collect that information to be able to take that decision inside an enterprise? It was a really yeah. French question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have yeah, time for yeah. last last question on APR for people. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Yeah.